Poland playing what we've called Teamer Moon, as it is splashing for Tarmo Waves, against Blue Red Twin. Post board, this may in some ways resemble like a Tarmo Twin versus Blue Red Twin matchup. The Blood Moons in Jeff's deck, not particularly well positioned here. No. As we are underway, Jeff starts out on a Misty Rainforest. It's going to be an island into Serum Visions for Nicholas. And yeah, looking at it post board, Jeff doesn't actually have any additional threats to board into. So his win con is basically the four Tarmogoyfs and two copies of Vidalkin Shackles, along with your typical Snapcaster and Lightning Bolt tempo plan. Medillion Click as well. He's got two copies in. And no Haymakers, though. Nothing from like a Karanos or a Batter Skull. No. And I mean, Jeff stacks all the decks I've seen of him in Modern. He tries very hard to play only on his opponent's turn. He's low to tap out for big stuff. So I'm not surprised to see something like zero batter skulls in the sideboard because that's just not the way he's playing the format. Yeah, really the only sorcery speed card here is are the copies of uh, Shackles and Tarmogoyf. And we see both players just trading land drops initially here, both with two lands in play. Jeff will be... Jeff on the play, and he will probably not be the one to flinch first here. As you said, whole deck being instant speed. And we'll go ahead and pass back to Nicholas. And Jeff's deck is just flush with cheap interaction for a deck like Splinter Twin. Uh, you expect to see cards like Mana Leak, and cryptic command but he's also playing things like spell pierce and boomerang so playing as much as he possibly can here to interact cheaply yeah two copies of boomerang in the deck that's not something you traditionally see but not not the worst here i mean it's just an, it's another unsummon style card yeah gives some incidental value against some of the other decks in the format as well certainly i'll tell you the card's insane against amulet bloom if you ever get to have one yeah uh, you're going to hit a bounce land with a Bounce land trigger on the stack, boomerang a bounce land. That's, um, they have to pick up all their lands. It's really bad. And draw for return for Nicholas is going to be a dispel. Or draw rather off Serum Visions. Both players just building toward this fight. You see a lot of permission in Nicholas's hand. Two copies of dispel already. So it looks like his plan is going to be to force through this combo one way or another. It's very common. Uh, the, the deck does kind of a staring contest element to it, especially post-board. Loads up with a lot more counter spells in a variety of matchups. And he's actually going to go ahead. Jeff went for an end-step boomerang, and Nicholas is going to go ahead and dispel that. Which is interesting. Not, it was just a boomerang on a land, I guess, that he was fighting over. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing, nothing else in play, so. I'm wondering how bad is it for him to pick up the land? I I suppose he does have seven cards already in hand, so he'd have to discard after picking up the land, which isn't something you really want to do. Questionable how much that matters. I think I feel like Dispel is so powerful for Nicholas in this kind of matchup that I'd be willing to discard cards well, to keep it. Yeah. Yeah. Serum Visions for Jeff. And right now... It's kind of, it'll be an interesting staring contest to see who starts trying to make a threat first. Jeff bottoming both cards off the Serum Visions. He's actually light on action at the moment. So he's going to go ahead and snap cast that Serum Visions and really uh, probably try to find a Tarmogoyf so he can, or something like that. And just get on the board. Just put the burden on Nicholas to be the one responding to something. Yeah, Snapcaster is unlikely to go all the way, but at least warn some sort of response. Right, once Jeff has a Snapcaster, especially a Tarmogoyf in play, then he can just actually do nothing. And yeah. he can play the defensive game that I, I think he wants to be playing here. And fourth land from Nicholas. Electrolyze, Lightning Bolt, Dismember, Spell Snare, Dispel. A lot of great reactive cards, but no threat really for Nicholas. Eventually he's going to have to flinch here and do something about the Snapcaster Mage, but he may be able to take beats for a lot of turns until that happens. Yep. And going for Electrolyze on Snapcaster Mage. I mean, should he... So, tell me this. He did not go for this when Jeff was tapped out last turn. Well, it, it's possible that Jeff j just does not move into combat for the respective Deceiver Exarch, and he might be able to squeeze a little bit more out of it. So, 
Uh, I, I think that it's close whether or not you want to tap out in that spot, but it's fine because Jeff just might not attack. All right, Vendillion click. So if Jeff goes and lets the electrolytes resolve, and then Vendillion clicks Nicholas. So now the information here, really valuable. Yeah, and that hand is stacked. Stacked with instants. It's, it still doesn't win yet, you know, but it, yeah, it's got a lot of answers. Dispel, Lightning Bolt, Dismember, Spell Snare, Electrolyze. And I feel like Jeff's just got to take Electrolyze out of this hand. He, he can't. If Nicholas keeps two for wanting him with these Electrolyzes, right. that's not a good game plan for Jeff. Especially given that Nicholas's hand is so good at defending himself and keeping Jeff off of, of, of Jeff's action. I think that card's just got to go. And yeah, absolutely. He will go ahead and take the Electrolyze. Draw was remand for Nicholas. And that was a main phase when dealing clicks. So now we pass back to Nicholas for his next turn. Draws a copy of Negate. So Nicholas continuing to just be full up on instants. Yep. He's really well equipped to play Jeff's game as well. <laughs> it's hard to tell which deck is which right now. What we know is that Nicholas has a combo to win with and that Jeff has some Tarmogoyfs. Right. Given that difference, I, I feel like I'd rather be the guy with the Tarmogoyfs just because they don't need any help to do things? In the abstract, yes, but given the just the disparity in quality of hand right now, I think I think Nicholas right. has got a pretty big edge. I do you think Nicholas is ahead. Jeff does have his green mass, or plays a mountain for the turn. Swings with Vendillion Click, that'll get a lightning bolt. Board clear again. And Je Jeff, with no plays in his turn, will just go ahead and pass. Would have loved to have found a Tarmogoyf, now, granted, Nicholas is ready for that. He does have a copy of Dismember ready in his hand. Tarmac, if not big enough to just answer that. And when both of the decks have Cryptic Command, then it becomes which is the more efficient Cryptic Command deck. Often that means who plays better at instant speed and uh, who is able to make more land drops and just play a leaner general game. And I think that Blue Red Twins a little bit better served to play that kind of game than Jeff's deck. Jeff ultimately has to get something down on his main phase. Yeah, there are cards like Vidalkin Shackles, though, that if Jeff does get down, are, are really big problems for Nicholas. Yeah. I don't know if he's boarded in any of his copies of Ancient Grudge, whether or not he's seen Shackles yet. He does have two in his sideboard. And based on how these games go, I, I think he would use them if he did have one. Going back, Nicholas now finally with the creature. It's going to be Grim Lavamancer, full graveyard for Nicholas, and that'll come into play. He's got six instance to back it up. I was a little surprised to see Grim Lavamancer being kept on top there with the Serum Visions from last turn because it just seems so low that this sticks against a deck like Jeff's. Yeah. Starting the beginnings of a counter magic fight here though, Grim Lavamancer's cast. Jeff will go for Flash Freeze. Nicholas will Spell Snare back. Jeff's going to go ahead and remand. We'll see what he's targeting. Could be his spell, could be the, it's probably his own Flash Freeze. Yeah. So he gets to draw a card, put the Flash Freeze back in his hand, and then try to Flash Freeze the Grim Lavamancer again. Now, what I like here is that Nicholas could remand his own... Well, Nicholas could remand Jeff's spell for him, I suppose. He's going to go ahead and just dispel, so everything's countered. Yeah. And then Lightning Bolt will, try, will attempt to take down the Grim Lavamancer, and that will get a negate. Wow. So a huge fight over this Lavamancer. I'm surprised that, that Nicholas is going out of his way here to fight this hard over Grim Lavamancer. If it sticks, that's great, but... Uh, Jeff's deck feels like the type of deck that's going to be able to push this thing off the table without too much difficulty. And we'll land six for Nicholas, and now he's going to go ahead and just pass back. Jeff doesn't appear to have an answer right now, so Nicholas will get two damage over a turn for a while here. Yeah, yeah good on Nicholas. This is not the, the battle I would have fought, but right now it looks pretty good. Yeah, well, it was the only... It's not like he could be very picky about his threats. It was the only card he had that was a threat. Oh, I'm just saying that he could have scribed to the bottom with the Serum Visions and then sure. just tried to wait for something else. Yeah. What I like is that Nicholas's hand was so good at fighting a counter war that it seemed like he just was itching for a counter war bad enough that he wanted to start one over anything while he was still so well positioned. Right. I mean, he got to use all of his mana there pretty efficiently, which is good for him. Yeah, I mean, it did turn out where it did end up working. Do you see, though, Jeff, with the ability to rebuild, all it takes something like this Snapcaster Mage, and he's back in business. Snapcaster will go ahead and flash back the Lightning Bolts. That will get remanded by Nicholas. Jeff will try to Cryptic Command the Remand, and Nicholas out of Counter Magic. Or rather, he's going to try to, sorry, negate. He negates the Remand, not Cryptic Command. So. Yeah, he doesn't want to play all of his men in that spot. Cryptic Command also pretty efficient at uh, just fighting over some main base stuff that negate necessarily isn't necessarily. Like, also fights over creatures, which is nice. 
Yeah, Snapcaster swings in for two. Nicholas down to 16, and now Jeff has taken control here. Nicholas go for an end step to Seaver Exarch, but Jeff can cryptic bounce Snapcaster if he needs to, which seems really powerful. Combo deck. Combo deck. <laughs> Once again. Yeah. And we'll see if it's counter draw or counter bounce. I suppose if you're Jeff, you, you really don't mind having Snapcaster around. If he has a, a Serum Visions in his graveyard, however, he probably just wants to counter bounce. Lightning Bolt will take care of Snapcaster Mage, it looks like. Jeff went with counter draw. Yep. See if he wants to fight here. Yeah, uh, not yet. Snapcaster hits the yard. Yeah, Jeff has been pretty judicious with, you know, he wants to resolve his spells for good value when he can, but he's also not trying to go broke fighting a big battle battle over every last thing. Right, I think Jeff's showed a little more restraint in these battles and is getting rewarded for it. I think so too. Vendillion Click was the play for Jeff. It'll be Cryptic Command from Nicholas, and this should probably be a time where Jeff will finally use a Cryptic. This will be Cryptic on Nicholas's Cryptic, and Jeff starts to pull away. Counter draws, now gets to look at Nicholas' hand. It's just Dismember. Jeff says, that's fine, keep it. Take your turn. Eh, looks like he's putting it on the bottom. Well, the thing is that Jeff's last Jeff's last card here is a copy of Vidalkin Shackles. So if he gets that one down, that this game becomes a lot harder for Nicholas. Okay, it was put on the bottom, though, you're right. Remand was the card that replaced it. Nicholas will see him visions. Keeps Snapcaster Mage on top, bins a land. And now we're over to Jeff. It's going to be Spell Skite. Blah. That will certainly stop some of these attrition game plans. That could happen. Remand will be on the spell skite. Jeff content. Okay, we'll, we'll just try it again. Snapcaster Mage was drawn from Nicholas. Does he want to continue to fight over spell skite? We'll see here. Well, I don't know if he has anything they can actually counter. He's got negates in his graveyard. He's got some stuff that's kind of expensive. He's going to go ahead and spell snare. Yep, S snare still left over. And Nicholas is, he's, yeah, now Vodalkin Shackles finally is in play. Has been pretty shooting off a lot of his counter spells very quickly. Um, maybe could pick his battles a little differently, but here is a great draw for Nicholas. This is Karanos, God of Storms. And Jeff's, Jeff knows he's in a bit of trouble. He's going to go ahead and steal the Snapcaster Mage on end step. Even Swings for five, Nicholas down to ten. Karanos is going to start shooting down those creatures very quickly. Big draw from Jeff, though. Copy of Tarmogoy. And it's pretty big. A land from Nicholas, he's going to draw that one. He much would have preferred a Lightning Bolt. Yeah. But the God of Storms is not doing that right now. Five, six, and that's a that's a next turn lethal for Jeff. That's ten, ten power on the board. Mm -hmm. So untapped from Hoagland. This should be good enough with just two lands drawn that last turn by Nicholas. And Jeff will give back the Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, still respecting the possibility of Pestermite or Zebra XR getting mixed into the equation here. Feels far enough that he just doesn't want to lose to something like that. Right. Cast Serum Visions, swings with the team. Snapcaster jumps in front of Tarmogoy. Nicholas takes three, goes down to seven. Jeff will pass the turn. Karanos this time reveals another island. That's an extra draw here. Pester might was it off the turn, though, for Nicholas. But that's not going to be enough. That should be, dare I want to say that could be a lethal swing here for Hoagland. Well, he'll actually play Pester might. Rather, he will tap this turn. He buys himself one more turn. And Jeff will, before attacks here, electrolyze. One and one, taking care of Pester might. That puts Nick down to six. Jeff draws. And that swing will put Nicholas to three, and three more is lethal. Jeff Hoagland at eight and zero oh defeats Nicholas Arasad in three. A very impressive stuff from Jeff. I think he just did a much better job of, of fighting over what mattered, used his mana better, um, never overextended, fighting over something innocuous. Uh, just, yeah, he was. I think he was more patient with his counter spells, and eventually that's why he ha he got to play them at the better time. Just just understood what mattered in that game, and.